Hey guys, Mike Quist here with Stone Coat Countertops. In this video, I'm gonna teach you step by step how to mimic mother nature. We're gonna create ocean waves. I'm gonna teach you how to make your own ocean wave foam. We're gonna match the deep blue sea and we're gonna graduate that with a gradient up into a nice teal blue tropical water. Guys, I'm gonna show you how to make this look like realistic foam waves. We've done our research. Time for you to see step-by-step step how to make your own ocean table. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. You got this! Guys, I need your help. I'm going through the jungle here and I know a lot of you guys are watching our videos and you're not subscribing. I'm working really, really hard getting these things done so that you can learn how to do ocean pours and survive the jungle of the epoxy world of knowledge. So I hope you really like this content and do me a solid. Subscribe for us and ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again and if you don't do it for me, do it for that dude right there. You got this. We were ready for a new table because this fake marble table had seen better days. And it was shocking how expensive new dining tables were. So we wanted to build one to match the ocean theme. The first thing we needed to do was clean and sand with 80 grit. We wanted to make a mechanical bond by roughing this up and creating tooth for the bonding primer to adhere to. Now we couldn't find a table that suited our exact taste, but we love the size and shape of this one. So why not refinish it? I'm gonna use acetone or fingernail polish remover to wipe off the dust to prep this to receive the bonding primer coat. We're gonna use a one quarter inch nap weenie roller to apply the bonding primer to prep for our underpainting. Make sure you let the bonding primer dry fully and then you're ready to start your ocean underpainting. We start with cobalt blue, which is a dark blue. We're gonna spray the edges and the back portion of our table to emulate the deep blue sea. And we'll graduate up from that with a gradient to lagoon. This is our next brighter blue. After lagoon, we're gonna do a little bit of sky blue, but I used mostly lagoon in the middle to really give it that depth. The sky blue is gonna marry between the dark blue and the medium blue. Have fun with it. Choose the blues that are your favorite. This is one of mine, which is Seaside. Seaside really glows and makes it look like that tropical water. And now the bleached stone granite spray. We sell all of these colors right there at Stone Coat Countertops and this matched sand to a T. I now have my white sand beach going in on my underpainting. I did make a mistake by not masking off my blue, so I used a little bit of acetone, and this turned out to be a happy accident. It really melded those colors together and made it look like I spent hours doing that gradient. Now I'm gonna use my dark bronze. The dark bronze will emulate a wet sand underneath the dry sand, just like in Mother Nature. I'm using a piece of ram board as a masking cover. My wife and I lay that down so we get an organic edge as opposed to overspray on the ocean. Back to that granite spray, which is bleach stone to make it look like sand and just give it that layered Two, look. Three. Beautiful. I absolutely love how that underpainting turned out. While it dries, let's go do some research. It's good to get inspired by nature and actually get out there and see how these waves crash on the beach. All right, doing some R&D on what white foam looks like on the beach waves. It's really beautiful and organic how the waves come up and start to recede. You know, I did get a little bit carried away and took my research pretty far. Just look at the beauty all around us. Question of the day, where do you love to go do your research and what inspires you to create your works of functional art? We not only got point of view from above the sea, we went under the sea. You got this.
I let my underpainting dry overnight and I couldn't have too much fun time to get back to work. We used our bleach stone granite effect spray, dark bronze, a plethora of blues, and some white spray paint. We also used blue, white, and green metallic powders, and we used some dyes, blue and white. We used our stone coat countertop art coat to do this tabletop pour. We wanted to make sure our project was nice and level so our colors would stay put right where we had them. We used our drill paddle mixer, some cups, stir sticks, gloves, a heat gun, a blowtorch, some sanding paper, paper towels, and some 70% isopropyl alcohol because we couldn't find any 90%. Okay, our project's all level and we're ready to sand between the underpainting so that our epoxy layer will bond very well. Wipe the dust using some paper towels and you're ready to mix the stone coat countertop epoxy with our additives. I'm pre-adding a little spoonful to each cup. That way I'm prepped after I pour the epoxy. I'll add the clear epoxy to my metallic powders, including our diamond dust, which is one of my favorites. I've measured the area of my project and I know I need three ounces per square foot for this coat. I'm gonna use a one-to-one -one ratio with our epoxy and I'm gonna mix this using my drill and a paddle mixer. Hold that bucket so you don't make a mess and remember, mix for at least two minutes. After I've mixed the epoxy, I'm gonna pour the clear epoxy into the cups. I'm not using all of the epoxy, just enough to create an additive. I'm now gonna add my dyes, my white and my ocean blue. This gives a translucent look to that deep portion of the ocean. I love that additive. Remember, you can visit us at StoneCoatCountertops.com to see all the products used in this video, including this Crater Lake Blue. Look at the colors that you can achieve with just a little bit of that metallic powder. Now I'm pouring this out in the same striated fashion that I did the underpainting. I'm starting with the darker blue metallics and dyes and working my way towards the lighter colors. I'm creating a lot of depth because I'm putting just a little bit of color over my underpainting so as not to hide the whole underpainting. Then I'm gonna fill in all these different gaps with my leftover clear epoxy because I only use a small portion to mix up with the metallics. These are pro tips of how to match the ocean. Now what I did is I added some diamond dust into the clear epoxy wherever the white sand beach was so I could make it sparkle just like it does in a perfect sunset. I'm using a gloved hand to really push and spread these colors and now it's time to add that clear in between all of the different color. Then I'll just use my hand to meld and push those colors together so it creates a natural gradient and natural depth that you'll get to see underneath into that underpainting. I love this process. It's like finger painting on a whole new level. I'm gonna use a normal propane torch to remove any bubbles caused by mixing the materials. I just sweep the surface back and forth to get rid of those micro bubbles and cause the epoxy to lay out like a sheet of glass. Now it's time to make the foam concoction. I'm using our white dye, a little bit of spray paint, and some diamond dust all mixed in with our art coat to make our own sea foam. When I went to the beach, I noticed that the waves crisscrossed one another, so I wasn't trying to be too perfect. I wanted my waves to come out organic and realistic looking, and I'm really glad that I did this. I'm using a heat gun, and I talked to my good friends, artists till death. They have their own YouTube channel on how to work with resin, and Erica told me to push the waves back away from the line of your wave, and this will create realism, and I was super pleased with that advice. I'm using the heat gun to heat the resin so it flows beautifully and I'm just using the air. I call it painting with air. I'm just pushing that around until I'm happy with the wave structure. I had a blast and I gotta be honest, it was hard to know when to quit. And I'd say, go for it, have some fun, make a sample board and get in tune with mother nature because I had so much fun making these waves.
check out this ocean pour that I just did this morning. I got some diamond dust in the sand and then I got some translucent ocean blue dye back here. I really like the gradient and how this table has come out. Guys, I wanna know, diamond dust or no diamond dust, does it look too blingy or do you like it in the sand? Let me know in the comments below. I let our stone coat color coat dry overnight and the next day it was time to sand with 220 grit so I got a good mechanical bond between the color coat and the clear coat. I'm just using my random orbital sander. Be sure to sand the edges as well as the surface. Look mom, no hands. Remember, safety first. All right, I'm gonna use acetone after I wipe the dust to be sure to get any residual dust off the surface as well. I'm gonna use the same things I did yesterday. My art coat at three ounces per square foot, but I'm also gonna add my trowel, my brush, my stir stick, because I'm gonna do a clear coat. I don't need any colors, just my clear. All right, I'm gonna mix for two minutes using a drill, just like yesterday, and then I'm prepped and ready for the clear coat. Because I mixed with a drill, I have a little bit of air in train. That's why the epoxy appears a little bit milky, but don't worry, that will come out after I trowel, chop, and torch the air out. I trowel with our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel, which gives me a very even amount of epoxy, which equals three ounces per square foot. Be sure to do the middle of your project first and then carefully push it over the edge. Now I'm using a two inch chop brush to chop the surface out. Remember, all of the tools and sundries you see in this video are found at stonecoatcountertops.com. I'm brushing the edges out after I've chopped the center of the surface, and then I'm gonna torch the same as I did on my color coat by sweeping motions back and forth. Now I wanted to add a little bit more waves to the piece per my wife's suggestion and request. And I really am glad that I followed her advice. By doing this, added another layer of depth. And because I was gonna do the ultimate top coat, which is a low sheen natural finish, I was gonna hide the spray paint that's on the surface. You wouldn't wanna do spray paint as your finished coat, but this was acting as a bonus round. I was really getting that extra wave action happening over the sand and bringing some added depth to this piece. I'm also using some of the alcohol to break that spray paint to give me the cell structure that you find in the foam waves. We let our clear coat dry and then it was time to come back for the final step. I wanted to add the ultimate top coat, but first I'm gonna sand the drips off. I'm using a heavy grit sandpaper or you can use a 50 grit metal sanding disc. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those drips and prep this piece by also sanding the surface and the edges in between each coat to create that mechanical bond. I'm gonna turn my sander down at a low speed so I don't hurt or burn through the edges because the epoxy will be a little bit thinner on those edges as opposed to the top. Turn it up full speed and sand the top, wipe and blow off the dust, clean with acetone, and you're ready for the ultimate top coat. I'm gonna remove any lint from my rollers. I'm gonna do this by just rolling it across some masking tape. I'm using a two roller technique a wet and a dry roller. I had a paint pole handy because this is a jumbo size table. All right, time to mix the ultimate top coat at a two to one ratio. I add part A and then part B and then just a cap full of water and then I'm gonna mix with a stir stick for two minutes. I'll pour the mixed ultimate top coat into my paint pan and then I'll start with my wet roller. I'll fully saturate the roller, and then I'll begin immediately rolling this on the surface. You wanna work quickly because the ultimate top coat sets up fast, so work fast. You're gonna want to have no lap lines, so if you work at this speed, you'll come out with fantastic results. If you have a jumbo job, just break that up into sections and do one section at a time. First wet rolling, and then immediately going to that dry roller. As I wet roll, I'd be sure to add plenty of material. I'm not gonna skimp because I'm actually gonna remove the excess material with the dry roller. I'm using the wet roller to remove as much as I can, and then I'm going to switch over to the dry roller. This is how you get a fantastic finish 
that looks as if it was sprayed. I'm gonna put all of the weight on the shoulder or the elbow of the roller and feather that finish out and just overlap my strokes by about 50%. I'm only gonna do this once as to not overroll the surface and create lap lines, but you will get fantastic results. Remember, do the edges as well as the underside where the drips existed and you'll get a beautiful, long lasting, ultimate top coat. The top coat will roll out slightly hazy and it will dry crystal clear to a very natural looking finish. Check out the ocean waves now. I applied the ultimate top coat and I love the sheen level that I'm getting. I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you like this shine or did you like it better shiny? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna be using this as a tabletop and I wanted the ultimate durability so tell me what you guys think. Check out that water. Wow. The waves and the sand. There we go. I love, uh, I love the forgiveness that this product has. The ultimate top coat. Woo! <laughs>